So for those of you that watch my videos and see how I've made music here and how I've made the videos that you see on this channel, you may be interested in the gear that goes into both making the videos and the gear that goes into making the music. And if you've seen some of my recent lunch break sessions where I'm just going at it with music production, the short clips, but you may not realize that there's a whole system of gear that goes into making what I'm doing on my iPad fluid and enjoyable to do. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the full studio desk setup so that you can get a handle on how I make this music and how I make these videos. Let's go. What is up creatives? It's Jarrell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. And I'm super stoked to share with you guys this desk setup. When I say help you make music freely, gear goes into it sometimes. And I make gear review videos like this, as well as tip and tutorial videos in that realm. If you like that, definitely hit that subscribe button. Consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying the content. All of the gear that I talk about in this video will be in the description, so check it out. Full disclaimer, these are affiliate links, so it helps out the channel, we get a small kickback. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, right now I've got things wired a little bit different so I can do a little bit of show and tell here, but if I switch over to this camera, this is actually my iPhone 13 Pro. Um, and you can see it here in the camera. <laughs> this is the camera you will normally see mounted up here as my top down. And usually I'm using the telephoto lens on this camera mounted way up here uh, to capture my iPad. But right now we're using the standard lens. Um, so that's one of my cameras. Um, but before we get deep into camera gear, I do want to talk about the music production gear. So. Right in front of me, you're seeing my 11 inch M1 iPad Pro. This is the one terabyte model. This is the machine that I use day in, day out for my music production. Everything's done right here on this iPad. That iPad is running through this USB C. This is actually a Thunderbolt cable running to this CalDigit TS3 Plus dock. Um, you can see I have two of them here because one of them's for the iPad and one of them is for the MacBook which is back here, and that's what's running the show for all of the streaming and all of the video creation. But we're gonna get to that later. Next, we're gonna talk about my audio interface, which is right over here. This is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Really solid interface, really affordable interface. Highly recommend it. It's got two inputs, two outputs. The sound quality bump that I've had with this interface, it's been pretty tremendous. Uh, before that, I had the M Audio Mobile Pre, very old interface, still good, but I get way better sound of the focus, right? It's a more new interface and it, it sounds great. So running into that is actually my microphone over here. This is the blue spark. It's got this little sleeve on it because it's part of the enclosure actually that I use over here. This is the Alctron PF8 and this is the enclosure I usually have over my microphone. It's like a portable enclosure for your microphone. Microphone goes in there. This is a pop filter over the top. So it, it's two birds with one stone. This was the cheap, basically the cheaper version of the Chaotica eyeball. I might try out the Chaotica eyeball at some point, but um, those are both connected to a very cheap <laughs> boom arm right here. <laughs> I can't actually remember how much this is, but it, it is linked below. I might link a better one than this because it's a little, it's a little flimsy, but it, it gets the job done. Right next to that, you see I got my studio headphones. These are the Audio Technica ATH M50 Xs, and boy are they a mouthful. But they're they're really really quality. You've probably seen these in a million videos on the internet. People use them because they're reliable and they're affordable as far as studio headphones go. I really love this version. This is the Bluetooth model, not just because it has Bluetooth, which I love, the controls are down there, um, but it also has a regular 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right here. It makes it really easy for swapping out cables for something you might want instead of the stock one. So these headphones are sitting on this uh, headphone stand here. Uh, super cheap, I'll link that as well. Before these headphones go to my interface, they actually make a pit stop at this volume box right here. This is basically an audio switcher that I use. I have two of them. One is for headphones. One is for my studio speakers, my studio monitors here, which we'll get to in a sec. 
Um, but I do this so that I can switch between audio running from the iPad and audio running from the MacBook. And it's a really easy, really easy toggle. All I did was run one of these cables here in the back runs out to the focus, right? And one of these runs to the other interface that I have under my desk, which I will show you as well, but that's running to the MacBook. One of the things you're going to notice with my setup is it looks very minimal and very clean but there's a lot going on. <laughs> so I'll try to be as straight to the point as possible and not get confusing with it. I mentioned my studio monitors. Those are these here. These are the Mica studio monitors. They're very old. They run on just straight up speaker wire, which is running to my amp, which is under the desk here. I'll show you some more under the desk in a bit, but that's an old school amp and a, and a big speaker. So I got that bad boy there, mostly for the bass response. Um, and then I have two Mica monitors up here. So right below my iPad, you'll notice I got my CME X key air here on the desk. This is the MIDI controller that I use the most. And I actually have changed some things now to where I just leave this literally right here because it lines up in the perfect spot where if I just move my iPad out of the way, it's really easy for you guys to see me play in my videos. So I just keep it right here unless I have to take it with me on the go. Really easy to take it. It's a super thin, super light MIDI keyboard. And yeah, the battery on this thing is killing. I haven't charged it much in a while and it's still, still kicking. I've done a few videos on the X key air in the past, some of them praising it wildly and some of them criticizing it. Both of those things are accurate. I've had a mixed bag of a relationship with this MIDI controller, but it, I will say it has been much, much better as of late. And I think that's in large part due to what was causing it, which is a lot of issues in Beatmaker 3. So, to be honest, this keyboard to me is still where it's at. It's super high quality. I love playing this thing. It's got clicky keys. I don't know, something about it is just nice. Um, and then below that, you know, I got my classic keyboard and, and, and Apple trackpad with a skin on it. Um, I have this wired to where I can switch it between my iPad and the MacBook. And that's gonna be a common theme you're gonna see here. Almost everything I have is able to switch between both devices because I use both for different things and I like to be able to have as few things on my desk as possible. Another MIDI controller that I use is the Sensil Morph. I usually keep this one in my bag because I just like to keep it on the go, but this is one of the skins on it, one of the templates that it comes with, and that can come right off. And I have a few others. I actually have the full set. So this one is the uh, keyboard one, and then that stack you saw in between my Cal Digit docs, right over here, is a stack of the rest of the overlays for this MIDI controller. So, um, yeah. And since I'm talking about MIDI controllers, I do have to talk about the big keyboard over here, the Alesis Recital Pro. Uh, I do use this, not as much as my X key Air, but I do uh, have it turned on and plugged in often because I run the sustain pedal <laughs> down here under my desk, and I use that in conjunction with my CME X key Air since there's no port for a sustain pedal. Also down here beside my desk, I do keep the Apple Magic Keyboard case for the 11 inch iPad. Um, I do use this regularly. I really like to take it on the go. I can plop the iPad up here and it really, really pairs well with the Sensil Morph, which I can just lay over the top. It's actually pretty legit setup. Um, it works really well for being on the go. So I do keep that by the desk when I have my iPad mounted up there. Speaking of having my iPad mounted up here, I know I will get lots of questions about how I keep this iPad mounted. Um, it's really simple. It's actually just a, a monitor stand and I've done a little kind of like, uh, it's somewhat sketchy, but I've mounted this piece of metal here to this mount and then I have glued that piece of metal to the back half of a magnetic iPad case um, and then sprayed it over with black paint to make it look a little uniform. And uh, that's why I'm able to easily just pull this iPad off of the stand like so and then put it back on the stand without any fuss. It is able to fully articulate um, up and down 
And then it also, it can be rotated to show you the portrait version, you know. Quick note, for those of you that are interested in this iPad home screen setup, I'm gonna do a whole video coming up in the near future on how I'm able to stay productive as a music producer using this new setup and some of the awesome features that came in iPad OS 15. Um, and I'll go in depth on that, so be on the lookout for that video in the very near future. So the last bit of music gear, of course I keep some other instruments back here on the wall. Um, those are instruments that I do play as well as my drum kit there. But we're talking about just the desk setup. Uh, up here is my percussion fun box, gonna do a video on that pretty soon. Um, and then yeah, that is the audio gear and that's what I use specifically for making music on this channel. Now, we're gonna talk about some video production gear as to how I make these videos, and I'm sure a lot of you guys will be interested in this because a lot of people are making videos of themselves making beats, and if you're not, you probably should because it's gonna help get your music some traction. So, first things first, I got the, this is the M1 MacBook Air. Uh, this is the base model, 256 gigs of storage. I just keep it right down here, and the only thing running into it is this, CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 cable, which goes to, you guessed it, this CalDigit TS3 Plus right here. This is a just basic Scepter 1080p 32 inch curved monitor. It's very basic, it's not super color accurate, but it does the job. I just like it for the size and I've had it for years. Uh, you're getting a little bit of that parallax effect, but you're looking at Ecamm Live right now, which is what I use to film my videos. This is the software of choice. Um, I have used it and do use it for live streaming, um, and I do plan on bringing live streaming back at some point. <laughs> but this is, uh, this is the software here, and so I have a link for that in the description as well. On the back of the monitor, I do have what's called an HDMI splitter. It's just one button back here that I press and it lets me switch between showing you the MacBook up here and showing you the iPad up on this screen and that's super handy and clutch for when I'm just making music. This monitor is mounted using a uh, Perla Gear, I believe, dual monitor mount. Um, so it's a two arm mount. One arm is holding this 32 inch monitor and the other is holding all of this over here. So we've got some updates going on so obviously you're looking into my teleprompter and you're seeing what i'm looking at which is my gear list so i can help keep myself focused this is what has made a, a big difference in my video production is having my notes up here when i'm talking to you guys so right now if i look at the camera i'm looking right at the camera and i'm looking right at my list I can look at you guys and engage you while also keeping track of what I need to be doing. And that has been a game changer, especially in the live streams, because you gotta try to be engaging. But this is just a feel world uh, field monitor. This is a seven inch monitor. And then this is, I'm, I'm gonna butcher this because I'm pretty sure it's French, but the way it's spelled is T-O-U-C-L-A-I-T, however you pronounce that. That is this teleprompter right here. Um, and it's a 12 inch teleprompter, so you can actually put up to a 12.9 inch iPad up here and use that as your teleprompter. That would probably be a little bit better than using this little monitor. One, one complaint I've noticed is, for one, <laughs> the lettering doesn't stand very well, but uh, I've had to actually give it some extra support to keep it up because I've had to tilt this down so far to get the right angle that, you know, sometimes this thing would fall down on its own and that's no bueno. So keep that in mind. The thing I love about it is it's so clear to read here and it's also, it doesn't cause any glare with my main camera, which is the Sony ZV-1. And on that Sony ZV-1, I do have a Ulanzi wide angle lens attachment, which allows me to get a lot more in frame. That Sony ZV-1 is running to a dummy battery to keep it powered up without taxing the default battery on the Sony ZV-1. And plugged into that camera for audio, I have up here, this is a recent addition. This is the Deity D4 mini microphone. And this is the, the mic that I usually use nowadays for my videos is pointing straight down. It's a shotgun microphone. 
and that runs uh, along all the way to the camera. And up here next to that is where I usually mount my iPhone for my top-down camera. I have this guy right here. The phone goes right into this clamp facing upside down. I stick the phone up here and then the phone points down here and I have usually right here I have the Apple HDMI adapter with a charger as well to keep it charging. And this makes it so easy where I can just throw my phone up here when I come in here and I don't have to fuss with anything because it's on this Ulanzi ball head mount. I'm sure that's not what it's called, but I'll link it. And then the small rig super clamp is holding it here in place. So this just, this setup doesn't move. And all of this is just mounted on a monopod, a telescoping monopod that is attached to a TV mount, which is attached to the wall. And you might wanna know how these cameras are running into my MacBook. That is through a couple of cam links. I have two cam link 4Ks that are running into the CalDigit dock and then into the MacBook. You may also be wondering how I'm able to capture what's on the iPad screen and run that into the MacBook like this. And that way you guys can see the screen and see everything that I'm doing. That is because I am using an Elgato HD 60S Plus under the desk. As I mentioned before, for my top down, I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro, using the Filmic Pro app to send clean HDMI out into my MacBook using the cam link. I mentioned before, but I'll go ahead and show you a couple things under the desk, uh, my M-Audio Mobile Pre. So mounted down here under the desk is the M-Audio Mobile Pre. That is the interface I'm using to run my audio from my iPad into the MacBook to capture for the streams. And you can see there is a lot of cable management happening down here. It's not pretty underneath, but you can't see that from anywhere else. <laughs> Up here to the right, you'll see some lighting. This is my ring light that I'm using for fill light right now. It causes a nice white to be cast across this whole area and, and kind of fills up the space with light. Um, and then I have my key light, which is the Sokani LED panel. I have two of them, one here. And then for my hair light mounted up here is another Sokani panel. Also, I can't conclude without showing you guys the stream deck. So I have my old original stream deck wasn't enough buttons for what I had to do um, so I did eventually get the stream deck XL uh, which I keep here and I use these buttons to run my shows run my videos and switch between everything super clutch if you're going to do video uh, live streaming specifically but also if you just want a smooth workflow for shooting videos and, and going between cameras stream deck is essential really i realized i didn't mention how the camera and the teleprompter was mounted i have another ulanzi uh, ball clamp here with a quick plate that mounts the teleprompter and the camera itself mounts to the teleprompter i also just keep a little remote right here that has the buttons to turn my switches on and off that control the power for everything so I can just turn these buttons off and I am done with my video production. Also, since I like to keep my desk so clean, I do keep a little, basically a jewelry box over here worth of connectors and odd ends that I would use for connecting things to say my CalDigit docs. My mouse of choice, the Logitech MX Master 3. I just have a custom skin that I put on there myself. And that about does it. There's a lot of little odds and ends that come into making a setup that is easy to use and fluid for both music production and video production. So if that helped you out, definitely let me know in the comments. If there's any question you have about the gear I use, definitely leave it in the comments and I'm happy to answer those questions. Be on the lookout for my video coming up talking about my iPad home screen setup and how you can get more productivity in your music making process. But until next time creatives, go make something dope and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.